Hey, welcome back into the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT and we are once again continuing our development of the Found Fan Delver and Below series. Um, we are in Cragmore Castle. Um, we've got quite a lot to do. There's lots of walls and things like that, so I thought I would crack on with those. Um, probably not going to be a hugely interesting video this one. I'm pretty much just going to do walls. <laughs> so feel free to skip it. Uh, I need to do them anyway. So, um, you know, if you're looking for something to do, nice and relaxing, kick back, grab yourself a drink um, and watch me get everything wrong as usual. Um, so uh, we've obviously already been here and looked at a few things and I put some walls in. And of course, we had in the video uh, a little while ago, um, that we sorted out these arrow slits with our technique for that. Uh, I have done a little update in the background um, off camera uh, and I've gone through and added on these other arrow slits in exactly the same way for this tower and I've also double walled this uh, and the reason why these walls are really thick and what I was finding is it was very easy for the player tokens to clip through the walls a little too far um, so all I've done is double walled it to make sure that we're not clipping through walls and things. So currently Haley can't go through doors and stuff like that. Um, but she's also not clipping through these walls. She can go that far, but she's not clipping massively through the walls, whereas previously she was. There's a there's a big gap there. So she shouldn't be able to do that from the outside, for example. Um, and it's just to do with where that square is. And we can easily rectify those just by moving these walls out slightly. Um, we want them to be able to see the walls, of course, but not not randomly be able to. Uh, come on, you can do it. <laughs> just, just have so much trouble with the basics. Um, get out of the way. Uh, yeah, we we don't want it to doing. We don't want them doing silly things like being able to halfway pop through the wall. I mean, is, is it that vital? No. Does it annoy me? Yes. Does it annoy me more than it should? Yes. Um, but we can. Yeah, we can just do some stuff there and just make that a little bit a little bit tighter, a little bit better, um, just to get rid of some of that silliness. So in this video, really, that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the walls and the doors um, and just finish off this area. Um, and these big round towers, yeah, I'm going to double wall them. So um, I don't know. What am I going to say while I do this? Probably not a lot. Um, if you're really lucky, I might put some music on instead. So uh, you enjoy that while I do this.
Okay, and we're back. Uh, so, in theory, that is all the walls done. I, I know I've missed something. I always do. Um, so, I made a few executive decisions along the way. Um, I've, As I mentioned, I've double-walled these big, fat outside walls um, just for token control. And all of these arrow slits I have now done. There was a couple of them I put the walls the wrong way, but they all need to be restrictive looking in. So that's all good. Um, there's a number of places where we've got just doors and a number of places where we've got curtains. Now, strictly speaking, curtains are going to restrict movement while they're closed. They're going to restrict light. They're going to restrict sight. Uh, in theory, they don't restrict sound. But that's not a big issue for us because I don't need to worry about monsters. Uh, sorry, about the players making noise and whether the cat, whether the monsters can hear it because I'm going to make that judgment call. So that's not a big deal. Um I might need to alter some of those if I put some sounds in. Like I would like, for example, I know this is the dining area and there's a whole bunch of goblins in here making a bit of a row. Um, I would like to put some sound effects in. If I can find some decent sound effects of goblins chuttering and chuntering and arguing and stuff, that would be perfect. Not sure, not sure I can. Um, so, yep, curtains are all in there just as, just as doors. Um, at the moment all those doors are in double walled all of this this is a secret door so there is a secret entrance in the back there again if you're a player pretend you didn't see it <laughs> you're only spoiling it for yourself it's that please watch my videos but but don't watch my videos and spoil it for yourself but please watch my videos thing um so lots of curtains and things like that um, a couple of locked doors that i decided to put in because you know just because why not now a couple of arrow slits um i've decided to wall off so when they try to look in, they can't see very far. This is a main encounter area. Um, I don't really want them cheating. Not cheating. It's not cheating. They're using their initiative and they're being sensible in doing some scouting. I don't really want them seeing in there first. Um, but they can almost every other place. Here they can't. It's actually got on the image the fact that these are boarded up. Um, so I wanted to kind of replicate that as well. I'm just going to move this wall back a bit. So when they look in, they can see that boarded up a bit which is good um i've tried to where there's rubble you know make it look like they've got more access to the room than they would have had based on the rubble and i think that's everything done um i can't see that i've missed anywhere <laughs> you're probably all pointing at the screen at exactly the same place oh no i've just found one <laughs> i missed a bit here i knew i'd miss something just little bits like that um and as we go through and do the rest of the uh, the rest of these encounter areas, we did all this bit. Number one, two, three, four, five, six. We did all those. Uh, just need to do number seven and then the rest of this. Uh, and then we can um, almost call this one done. So in the next video, what will I be doing? I will be continuing doing journal entries for number seven, eight, nine, ten, etc. And populating this with the various monsters and stuff. Uh, I have not forgotten that we need to sort out the magic wine thing over here um, and exactly how I'm going to get that magic item to work. I think I'm going to make it a um, a, a, a one-shot. Sorry, yeah. I'm not going to worry about the whole thing of you drink too much of it and you get poisoned rather than get the temporary hit point. I'm just going to have it. It sets your temporary hit points to one. So regardless of how many times you drink, you're only ever going to have one temporary hit point from that at a time. Uh, I'll also need to work out what the value of that is because if they're smart, that's something worth selling. It's not that useful um, to the party. Okay, uh, right, everything's done. Um, you can see this beautiful map that we're using. It's already got furniture and stuff on it, which is great. So I'm going to leave this one here. And then we'll crack on with journals and stuff in the next one. Uh, I probably ought to go away and play with that, uh, play with that brandy. See you guys. You take care.